Midwest Whitetail is brought to you by Realtree, Muddy Outdoors, Hoyt Archery, Fuse Accessories, Frigid Forage, Scott Archery, Cabela's, Trophy Rock, Night and Hail Game Calls, TrailCamPro.com, Bloodsport Arrows, Rocket Broadheads, and Nikon. Thanks for joining me today at Midwest Whitetail. Today's episode is the very last one for the 2012 season. It's always kind of a, a moment of reflection uh, anytime you come to the end of a season to kind of look back over it and uh, see the things, maybe some lessons that you learned and uh, some of the real highlights of the season. And we're gonna catch that on today's episode, but first we're gonna go to the 2013 ATA show. We were there uh, just this past week. It was down in Louisville, uh, Kentucky. And a lot of our sponsors were there, so we're going to show you some of the new products from them, and then we're going to take a look at the highlights from this past season. All right, my name's Gideon Jolly. I've been with Hoyt for 17 years, and I'm going to talk about the new 2013 Hoyt Spider. The, the Spider is a revolutionary bow. Uh, we've got a lot of improvements on this bow. Uh, this bow is the 3.8 pounds. Uh, it shoots an ATA of 330 feet per second, and it is the quietest bow that Hoyt has ever produced. We've got these uh, new features on here that are called the air shocks, and what, what they do is as you draw the bow back, they, they maintain position. The, the benefit of that is that this mass does not travel with the limb. What that does is that gains you some performance advantage. It also, when your limbs contact it, you still have all of the noise characteristics and dampening features uh, to dampen out all the vibrations on the bow. This gives us a performance increase and it also reduces the noise of this bow. This bow is the quietest bow that we have. It uh, is an axle to axle of 30 inches, so it's short and compact and the name Spider is very fitting for it because it's a killer. It's a whitetail hunting machine. Hi, I'm John LaCourt with Nikon. We're here at the 2013 Archery Trade Show. This is the new Archer's Choice Rangefinder. It's more compact than the prior model. It's about 10% smaller. We enhance the size of the ocular so it's actually easier to find your target. It also increases the eye relief as well as the field of view. It features a selectable display for low light situations, six power monocular with a minimum distance of six yards, waterproof and fog proof, and it comes with the silent technology case, so it keeps it ultra quiet when you're in the stand. <laughs> Check it out at a dealer near you. Gene Price with Trophy Rock. We're here at the 2013 ATA show, and we've launched a new product. As you know, most of you that follow Trophy Rock, we don't launch very many new products. So this is our first one in 10 years. The product's called 465. It is basically just a ground up Trophy Rock. We've had a lot of requests for this product and mainly the holes that the deer dig. You know, you don't want to set your rock in there because it'll deteriorate your rock uh, pretty quickly. So this product works great for that, to put it in those holes so when the deer are eating in those holes that they're getting a good amount of trace mineral. So the product comes in 30 pound bags. The name to us was Four Seasons. You can use it as a year long, all year long uh, mineral supplement and 65 plus trace minerals. It comes in 30 pound bags, has carrying handles. Um, it's available to all of our retailers right now. So you guys will start seeing it probably around the 1st of February. And um, I think you'll like the price. It's a great product to use by itself or in conjunction with Trophy Rock. And uh, don't forget about the camera census uh, surveys, about one rock or site per 80 or 100 acres. And it works excellent. And look forward to seeing some trail camera pictures back from everyone using it. Hi, I'm Chris Parrish with Night and Hail Game Calls. Tell you a little bit about some of our new fall lineup. New coming out for the fall is the Bonehead Series Calls. We've got the Bonehead Rattling System, which is kind of a spinoff of the pack rack with some improvements. And you can see we got a pretty neat concept look. And what we're doing is, is allowing a guy to, instead of just mainly rattling, you can actually lock these together, just like the antlers, if you're using a set of antlers, and do more grinding with them. More realistic, 
Um, these are prototype samples, but they're going to look like real bone. And I, I like the new concept with the look with the, with the deer head on one side and that little antler look on the other. Second in the series is the Debone Deer Call. Now, the name kind of gives it away. Looks just like a deer antler. It's actually taken off of a real deer antler mold. And it's soft rubber plastic all the way through. A little deeper, more guttural sound. The big thing with this call is it's strictly an exhale call. It's strictly a grunt call. And it's made to be able to get more volume with it for one, but user friendly, simple, and you can get loud, quiet as well as loud. But we've designed it so that the reed doesn't freeze even though it's an exhale call. You're not losing any air, so you're gonna get absolutely all the volume you can, and it absolutely will not lock up. So you can blow this call as loud as you want to, and hopefully you can you know, attract that deer that's two or 300 yards instead of that, that 100 yard radius we normally got. Hey everyone, welcome to 2013 ATA show. I'm here in the Muddy and Bloodsport booth. I want to give you a quick look at, at one of our brand new hunting arrows for 2013. This is basically your all-in-one uh, ultimate hunting arrow. It's got all the features a guy can want. First of all, it comes with lighted knocks on the arrow already. Cool thing about this system, basically this is the light right here. This is only five grains. Uh, second cool thing on this arrow is the blood ring. It's a spray on texture material basically it's really good at capturing the blood and hold it on there longer so you can get a good look and make that decision whether you should go and check the deer right away or wait or whatnot so my favorite part about it uh, it's got glueless insert on the front basically it comes with an allen wrench you screw it down in there and it expands the inside walls of that shaft what that allows you to do obviously is index your broadheads perfectly with your veins you know tune your arrow however you want it make it spin up perfectly uh, you can take it in and out however you want. Very versatile arrow. Uh, all in all, this is about as good as it gets as, as a hunting arrow. For more information, visit GoMuddy.com. All right, over here on the Muddy side, I want to show you a brand new stand that we're, we released yesterday. It's called the Muddy Vantage. What's unique about this stand is the way it hangs. Basically, it's just a, this bracket on the tree has a little keyhole. I know, I know we've all been there before, hanging by one arm, trying to hold the stand up, throw the ratchet strap around. This makes it easy. You can just have this stand on the ground on a pull-up rope or whatever. You, all you're hanging is this bracket. Real easy to hang. Ratchet strap it in. Just go straight in, and that's it. You throw a cam strap around the bottom, and you're done. So it's perfect for you know a lot of guys hunting public land. You maybe not want to leave your stands up in the tree. If you sell that bracket, you can just have a bunch of brackets rather than a whole bunch of stands. We do sell the mounts as accessories as well because this will retrofit all of our other muddy stands. So any muddy stands you, you have. This will fit that. It's an awesome product. We've got a great response so far yesterday and today at the ATA show. Uh, you can learn more about it at GoMuddy.com. Okay, what, what we have here is a real heavy-duty rotational molded cooler. And ro rotational molding is the same process you use to build a whitewater kayak, so it gives it a good, tough exterior and interior shell. Uh, you have the stuff that typically fails on a cooler, like the hinge system, the latches, and the handles are all overbuilt so they don't tear up and you know the typical things that normally fail on a cooler you just don't have those type of problems with the Yeti. You have over uh, two inches of insulation in the walls about three inches in the lid and you combine that with this ceiling gasket and it gives you the ability to hold ice for a very long time. Uh, you have tie down straps if you want to tie them down to an ATV or in your truck bed or you can also lock each corner which makes them bear proof uh, we have rubber feet on the bottom so they don't slide around in the back of the ATV or the back of the truck bed. And uh, just an overbuilt cooler. This model right here has an optional uh, seat cushion that you know just snaps on there that fits on any of the uh, Yeti Tundra models. And uh, yeah, that basically just covers it. But you have a real heavy duty, well made ice chest that uh, will hold ice for a long time. So, so what the Sin Master is designed to do is uh, most guys are coming in from hunting today, and what they're doing is they're putting their clothes in totes or bags, and that's designed to lock odors out, but in reality, what those bags or totes are doing are actually locking the odors in. And the key is you have to get that out right away because moisture causes bacteria growth, bacteria causes odor. Uh, you put your boots in here, your clothes in here, your release, range finder binoculars, close this up and turn it on, and this motor sucks the air up through here, pushes it sideways down this tube, and back into the bottom. So what you're getting is a circular motion of air through your clothing. 
no outside air is being introduced, so you're blowing hot air through your clothing, it's drawing all the moisture out. At the same time, you're cleaning your clothing with carbon. The nice thing about our carbon that we use in our scent masters is this carbon can be replaced, and we recommend that it's replaced uh, once per year prior to the season starting. And for those hunters who are needing more space than a unit like this can provide, we actually have our scent master lockers, uh, which will hold roughly six times the equivalent of this. It's, it's not a magic product, okay? It's a part of the process. You still keep your body clean, you still hunt with the wind, you still use your sprays, your cover sprays, your scent elimination sprays, but every day when you come in, when you're done hunting, you put your clothing in here, put your boots in here, your gloves, your base layers, your release, and you run this and you get the moisture out and the odor out. And what that's gonna do is gonna make all your other products work even better for you. The sun is just starting to come up, and it feels good to be back in an old familiar stand. Well, here's our velvet, I would say buck, but it's not a buck, it's actually an antlered doe. Welcome to Midwest Whitetail. Tonight, I'm going to be hunting one of my dad's favorite stands. I'm, I'm really excited, this is great. It's the first year I've shot in years. It's September 25th, Iowa youth season, and we're headed to a spot that my dad calls the killer stand. Well, here he is, he's a nice little mature buck. Slab. That deer is a giant. Look at all that junk on his base. It's the uh, morning of October 30th. I'm way back in the timber, hoping to catch these deer coming back from the crop fields. Shaking like crazy. It's a legend of a buck right there. That's a buck we call Twinkie. I think he's 10 years old this year. It's November 1st. I'm set up on the downwind side of a, a thick bedding area with the hopes of catching a buck cruising the downwind side, scent checking for does. You gotta be kidding me. Unbelievable. It's November 3rd, and I'm heading back on that same ridge where I've been hunting, hunting the double G4 buck. I'm gonna put a tree stand up back there. So I'm gonna go back there and give it a try. Hopefully, uh, hopefully he'll, he'll come out tonight, and if he's the first year out, we'll be in good shape, but otherwise we might be in trouble.
bad. Look at this. You know, I can see my front. Quite a story on this buck. Quite a humbling thing, really, to be able to hunt a deer like that. And I just thank God that we have the opportunity to do things like this, the, the blessing of being able to do the things that we love to do. So I sit here with a definite sense of sadness that the buck is no longer going to be here to hunt, but I have a great sense of satisfaction in finally harvesting the G4 buck. Well, it's November the 9th, and we decided to push in yesterday and hang a couple of stands in their bedroom back here. We're right in the middle of where a lot of these bucks live, I think, and uh, probably try some grunting and rattling, maybe see if we can pull one of these shooters in for a shot. He's done. Why did that happen fast? Couldn't be happier with him. I'm glad to have my tag on a big Iowa eight pointer. It's December 10th and we're going to a blind across the field from the cabin. Uh, my dad's seen some pictures of some nice bucks on the trail cameras here. I've had a great season this year. Today is Saturday, December 15th, and we're going back to the same blind that I was in last weekend. We saw a lot of bucks there, and hopefully some of them will come out again tonight. Second shotgun season in Iowa, the second weekend. We're going out this afternoon where we were this morning. We hunted over a little turnip spot, and uh, when we left, we pulled the camera, and there was a couple of shooters on there. One is the Blanco buck, and we're just hoping that maybe he'll come in this afternoon. Mistake, he stopped on the old but I may be getting old, but I can still use the gun. <laughs> we had a nasty weather front roll through here yesterday. Decent right now, mid 20s, but it's supposed to be down in the single digits tonight. So I'm thinking that we are going to move in big time this evening. Trophies in the eye of the beholder, and uh, this evening, shooting loppy, I can't imagine being more proud of any deer that I've killed. Like I said, that's it for the 2012 season, but we're not going to be gone long. We only take about a month break here, then we'll be coming back again with the off-season episodes, and we'll cover a lot of ground with those episodes. They're a lot of fun. We get into topics of deer management, uh, shed antler hunting. Just some of the stuff that we really just don't have enough time to cover uh, during the season because we're, we're so wide open on the hunts and the hunting strategy itself. So uh, we will be doing that in about a month. If you want to get on the mailing list, uh, we send out a mailing list every week 
uh, whenever there's shows, new shows up on the website. And I, I don't ever send out any spam. We only use them just for that one purpose, is to let you know when we've got new episodes to watch on the website. So you can sign up right now if you want to, and we'll definitely keep you in the loop as far as when the off-season shows start and what the topics are going to be. Well, I appreciate you joining us this year for the whole 2012 season with all its ups and downs. We'll be right back here in another month for the next episode of Midwest Whitetail. And remember to always dream big. That's what I'm talking about. These were up on a, a little ridge, one of these little knobs here, about 50 yards apart. And this is actually a deer that I had pictures of this summer in my bean field, daytime pictures. And then I never saw him again. It's a deer I called.